What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro Aviation. Hope you guys had a fantastic day today and today we have the April 2023 Albuquerque Sunport International Airport update for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video. Today we have a very exciting Albuquerque update in store for you guys. We have some various aircraft movements, some route changes, and all kinds of fun items to digest in today's video. So I really hope you guys are excited for this. And without any further delay, everybody, let's go ahead and get started as per usual because we have a bunch to go into in today's airport update. Beginning right here, we have the American Eagle Embry Euro J-175. This guy's on the behalf of SkyWest with the nonstop service out to Los Angeles. Angeles or yeah Los Angeles today it's been a really good service for us as we've been making some big lead way with it and I'm really looking forward to the future here of the LAX service maybe we'll get some mainline at some point but nevertheless the 175 will do a great job for now and like I said I'm really looking forward to the future of it competing versus Delta on Skywest as well so two carriers flying that for um, uh, two Skywest flying that for two carriers so that's super cool to see and I'm really eager to see what happens with that in the near future Currently pushing back right here, we have the Delta Airlines Airbus A321. This guy's making a nonstop service today out to Salt Lake City, Utah. This has been a really good flight for us. And uh, after I pretty much begged for it for several updates for the main line to return, it finally did. And I think it's been really cool, especially going from 76 seats on the 175 all the way up to 175 on that last flight of the day or first outbound. It's been really cool to get to see this. And I'm really looking forward to the future of this main line service here at the Sunport. So like I said, this guy's currently making the nonstop out to Salt Lake City in Utah. Alrighty, everybody, here we go with this bag of tricks. I've been looking very forward to this as this really surprised me when I found this. Uh, this has not been here for a very long time. For anybody that's been watching my Albuquerque updates, I think the last time this aircraft flew in here was probably January of 2020. Which, if you can't tell, has been a very long time. But currently loading up right here, we have the Delta Airlines Boeing 737-900ER with non-stop service out to Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. So, as I was teasing at earlier, this used to be a very common visitor at Albuquerque. In fact, so much so that when I was there in 2018, I actually got to catch several of them. Predominantly with the blended winglets, but also a couple of scimitar winglets. But nevertheless, like I said, this has not been here in a very long time. So much so, uh, over three years was the last time this regularly uh, filed into Albuquerque. As of right now, this is going to be a one and done. Uh, it's three daily right now, but obviously just for the month of April. This will be going back to the A321 in May. So a very unique change here by Delta. I mean, here's a really good side-by-side -side comparison of the 737-900 and the A321. They're both very efficient and good aircraft for the uh, this type of route from Atlanta to Albuquerque. I'm not particularly sure uh, what this change was about or if there was something that Delta saw that they wanted to take advantage of. Both have very similar passenger numbers and uh, um, distance efficiency and whatnot so not exactly sure what the intention was here but it's certainly interesting that they're only going to do it for one full month so that's why we're soaking this in right now because this is a really big change and like i said it's really crazy to see just a one and done 739 three times a day not just one flight but all three flights are going to be on the 737 900 which as i said normally wouldn't be a huge deal but i mean just for one month and these these haven't been here for three years so i'm really eager to see what the future holds maybe we'll get some 737 800s or better yet maybe even an a321 neo on this service in the future or heck, maybe down the line, some 737 Maxes. I don't know, but it's certainly interesting to see this type of, um, you know, a little change here, and it certainly makes all the difference when it comes to some variety. So this Delta Airlines 737-900 doing the one and done over to Atlanta, and yeah, it's really weird to see this, but I'm certainly not going to oppose of it, as it's really cool to see. So really neat, and uh, certainly. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section. As expected, here's a little bit more of a common sight, the Delta Connection Ember Ear J-175 on the behalf of SkyWest Airlines, as teased at earlier. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to hold it up in a little bit better perspective, even though the lighting's kind of uh, different. This guy's trying to make a non-stop flight today out to Los Angeles, California. Uh, route's going very well, and I've certainly been very glad to get to see it here doing really good. All right, here we go with a very special aircraft to see Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 9 in the West Coast Wonders Orca livery. Beautiful airplane, so glad you get to utilize it today. Nonstop service out to Portland today. As assessed in the previous update, this is still on Saturday, Sunday, which is really odd, but certainly really cool to get to see Alaska uh, making it in here nevertheless. Uh, love their deliveries and the airline in general, so not just to a degree in general. So certainly love to get to see this effort right here, and I'm very excited to see what the future holds for Alaska here at the Sunport. It's looking good, and we'll see where it goes from here. This JetBlue Airbus A320 in the spotlight tail is loading up with the nonstop flight back up to New York John Kennedy, which is back to a daily service. So hopefully it's doing well at this point because there's been months where it hasn't. So I'm certainly looking forward to hearing about it and hopefully it'll be good this time around. Uh, JetBlue, of course, has several flights here at the Sunport to um, New York John F. Kennedy. 
it's really cool to get to see all the various tells and aircraft they bring in here so really cool service not many uh places out here outside like reno albuquerque those are like the big two that have JetBlue service so it's certainly nice to get to see it out here and uh yeah really cool for the biggest airport in new mexico hands down uh, pulling into the gate, we have this American Eagle Ember Ear J-175 on the behalf of Envoy Air coming in from Bertram International Airport in Austin, Texas. Now up to two daily, which is absolutely crazy, but not so crazy in the fact that they, these flights are doing very well. Uh, American really pulling in some very impressive load factors out of Albuquerque to Austin, some of the highest in the Austin network. So it's certainly deserving of a second daily. I was really, I wasn't necessarily skeptical, but I was interested when American made all these choices. Uh, some routes better than others, of course, but Albuquerque's panned out to be one of the best choices choices so far and it's gonna be interesting heck this might even go up to a main line at some point 319 is not out of the question so we'll see what's in the question for them at some point and hopefully it turns out to be good but austin bertram international non-stop is into the gate and then we have a nice conga line here of 737s uh three 800s starts out two ng models american airlines 737 800s as i alluded to in the previous update this is one of my favorite models and i'm so glad to have it so i couldn't pass up an opportunity to use both of them and that's why we got several even though predominantly from dallas phoenix and other american Airlines hub projects but uh they're always uh, there's always an opportunity to get to utilize them more often so love that effort but nevertheless this boeing 737 800 is making the non-stop service today coming in from dallas for orth international airport going to be heading back out there this service has been going very good for american as they're seeing uh some really solid numbers here predominantly 737s but you are getting a couple of uh, other aircraft in there on some days as well so looking really good out to chicago and this 737-800 is coming in from Chicago here in National Airport. That's a daily service. And again, American super impressive with their efforts on that flight. Uh, it's certainly interesting that they didn't choose frequency over um, uh, capacity on that service, but it does kind of make sense as it's a pretty long flight, so probably close to three hours. So certainly a nice flight right there. And like I said, that guy's back over to um, uh, O'Hare. Might be only two and a half, somewhere in there. Uh, double Evo Blue lineup for today's update. We got the United Airlines 737 pair. The 737-800 is currently coming in today from Denver, and we'll be heading back out there. It's a really cool service, and yeah, United's load factors have been phenomenal on that, mainline, regional, or both. So keep it up, United. You guys are doing a really good job, and I'm really looking forward to the future there on uh, that service for United. And this Boeing 737-900ER is making it out to Houston, George Bush, Intercontinental International Airport, as expected. Again, this route's been super productive for United, as they've seen um, various aircraft up gauges and frequency on that so super cool and i'm really eager to see what they do this summer with that considering that it's kind of in a weird spot with the uh, capacity frequency ratio compared to uh historic um events in that route so again that's kind of a wait and see situation there uh this south Carolina 737 700 is currently making the non-stop service today in from um the Baltimore service is a max eight on Saturday. So I'm going to try to use this on a different aircraft. Just trying to think of some different destinations. This guy's currently coming in today from Phoenix. Now he's heading over to Lost Wages or Las Vegas. Looks very good. And then here we go with the Conga line and Southwest aircraft. So this 737-700 uh, blended winglets is currently coming in today from Denver and now over to Los Angeles. Looking fantastic. We got a Canyon Blue in here. And as I've said previously, please go out and catch one because they are getting scarce. This 737-800 in the Canyon Blue livery is currently coming in today. Um, excuse me. This guy is coming in from, let's see here, trying to think of some other routes. Uh, Kansas City should have started. If it hasn't, I'm sorry, but it should be really close. Uh, it should be daily as well. So this guy's heading up to Kansas City. Glad to have that route back. Kind of giving me the old Southwest Hub Day vibes in uh, Kansas City. So that's really cool. And they have the new terminal as well now, which is very nice. So this guy's coming in from Kansas City and, and all of that jazz. And now he's going to be heading over to uh, Phoenix. So certainly getting plenty of fr frequencies in there to the Sky Harbor. And this Boeing 737 MAX 8 is currently coming in today from uh, Baltimore on the Saturday only. And now this guy's going to have a nonstop service today over to... Uh, trying to think if I'm missing anywhere obvious. Uh, oh, Dallas Love Field. Yes, there we go. So much better there as we continue to make the strides. And this 737-700, the jet bridge just came off. And this guy's going to be pushed back for Austin. And came in earlier today from Houston Hobbies. So really nice Southwest lineup. And they continue to go very strong. Uh, this Plies PC-12 for Boutique is currently making a non-stop service today. Coming in from Carlsbad, New Mexico, as expected. He'll be heading back out there. Really nice EAS service, and certainly nice to see it consistent. Usually EAS services aren't quite that consistent, so gotta love that effort. And this United Airlines Airbus A319 is coming in today from San Francisco and heading back out there. It's a beautiful aircraft. Uh, really glad to see the main line there for San Francisco as usual. It's a really, really cool service and something certainly not to take for granted at any time, no matter what. 
As we pan in here to this Learjet 75, taxing out for departure to runway 08, he's going to go join a big line of big airplanes. Nevertheless, this guy is currently coming in today from Vans Nuys, and this guy will have a continuing service today over to Addison Airport in Dallas. Uh, let me know if you guys know about that airport. It's talked about a bunch uh, in my classes at Oklahoma State because the majority of our uh, pilot classes have a bunch of people from Texas and uh, particularly many people from that Dallas or Worth area. Uh, several people got their... Uh, private pilot certificate and other ratings there. So that's very impressive. Uh, this Cessna 172 is taxing out for your local flight center. Uh, I'm forgetting what the name is off the top of my head, so I apologize, but nevertheless, he's gonna be going to do some uh, local flights around the area. I think they're practicing the maneuvers today. So best of luck to that crew. And this Thenum 300 in this purple livery with the uh, winglets is currently making a non-stop flight today in from the Denver Centennial Airport. This guy's now going to be flying to quite a random city today. This guy's heading out to Bakersfield, California. So just a little corporate action there. I'd love to see that. And I do have the Mesa CRJ-900 in here today. We'll say this guy came in uh, previously for Phoenix and will be heading back out there. Uh, or back out. Yes, yeah, back up to Phoenix. Uh, the reason that this aircraft is in today's update is because uh, these are now moved over to United. A good portion of them flying various routes. And I did want to feature uh, as many as I could before American loses to them all. So uh, I'm sure that United will be flying these probably Houston to start and possibly even Denver uh, in the future and any other destinations, maybe Chicago even. So we'll see what happens but I did want to feature it. And I thought that I would just give some more credit to the Shapeways one since I've really uh, been orientated on that, uh, the, uh, the new one that I have. So I thought it'd be nice to do this one. All right, for cargo today, we have a good lineup. The primary 737-800 can probably be better uh, seen from this side. This guy's currently making the non-stop service today, coming in from Cincinnati, of course, heading back out there. As stated previously, that's a really cool service for Albuquerque, and I'm really looking forward to the future of it. I think primary could expand even more than this. Uh, of course, they got the warehouse, and Amazon's big, man. They deliver to a bunch of cities nowadays, so you got to have aircraft to do it. So here we go. Uh, resources do not come easy, that's for sure. Uh, speaking of which, here's another one transporting resources, the UPS Boeing 7200 freighter. This guy came in today from Dallas-Fort Worth, and now it's going to be heading over to Ontario. Been really cool to see the uh, diverse services that these uh, 737s operate for UPS. You'll see them flying really short routes. You'll also see them flying some longer ones as well. So it's a really versatile aircraft, and that's why the 757 is a very cool aircraft in general. I absolutely love that effort. Uh, here's the UPS Boeing 767-300 freighter. This guy's getting some uh, the last uh, cargo on board on his turnaround over to Louisville. Uh, this has been another really nice service here at Albuquerque, as stated previously. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they uh, they do some A300s every now and then, but it'll be interesting to see if they ever like do anything bigger. Uh, not thinking they would ever do like an MD-11, but obviously uh, maybe we'll see some different air aircraft at some point, uh, but we'll have to see. It would certainly be cool to see an MD-11, but that's probably a little unrealistic unless of cargo. We have a second pandemic and uh, cargo becomes literally the only uh, element that is going to keep the nation running. But for now, the 767 is a really solid aircraft for airport size like this. Likewise for FedEx, as they fly two daily of these, so if it wasn't for two daily, they'd definitely be flying it in the 11 or 777. Uh, nevertheless, this guy's currently getting his uh, first cargo deep uh, loaded. This guy came in from Memphis on his second daily turnaround, and now he's heading back over there. Uh, the morning flight comes in pretty much by itself. Uh, well, not by itself, excuse me. It comes in with all the other smaller aircraft, and then this afternoon push that I kind of represented here is usually two UPS aircraft and a FedEx. And sometimes a FedEx A300 will come in too. And then Prime now, which has been really cool, and I also hope to get the uh, Prime ATR-72 for that Fort Worth service, but unfortunately, one has not surfaced yet. Um, that is in stock. The pre-order, I think, is still going for JC, so hopefully that'll come in soon, but I need to double-check on that. Uh, taxiing out for departure number three in line for takeoff is the Alaska 737-800 over to SeaTac. Certainly glad to get to see the 737-800 carrying it this month. Uh, it's a really good service, and I'm glad to see it as uh, this is some better weather here for New Mexico in terms of cloud coverage particularly, but also uh, temperatures are pretty reasonable during this time of the year here. So it's a nice area to come to, especially from Seattle. When you're getting tired of the overcast and cold conditions, they will see until probably about late June is when they'll start to see some better uh, weather. So American Airlines Airbus E319 is currently uh, number two in line for takeoff. This guy's back up to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport in his turnaround. Uh, this has been multiple Airbus aircraft this month, or actually I think it was a little bit of everything. There was a daily 320, 319, and 737, and the 900 that I had represented over there. I want to put the 900 on the taxiway, just no room left really, so put him over there in the corner. But excuse me, yes, this 319 is a great service. Really nice model here by Gemini Jets, and certainly glad to have it. It's a really nice one. 
Number one ready for uh, departure, waiting for an aircraft to land here on the displaced threshold is the United Airlines Airbus E319. This guy is currently coming in today. Uh, this is our Chicago service heading back out there. So certainly nice to get to see a uh, nice load of passengers uh, heading back over there. Uh, probably majority is point to point. So they're probably not too happy to go back after enjoying probably the weather here or business travel or whatever that may have been. So Chicago is a nice city, but certainly it gets a little chilly um, during select parts of the year, but it's certainly getting better as spring arises. Uh, last but certainly not least, with a very cool reflection off of that nice clear day outside, is the Spirit Airbus E320 Neo on short final for only eight. This guy's currently coming in today from Las Vegas, of course, Las Vegas in other words, heading back out there here in a little bit. Hope the load factors get better as they could certainly use it. Unfortunately, the load factors on this service have been poor uh, is a nice word to describe it, but hopefully it gets better. It's a nice model here by Gemini Jet. Certainly glad to have it as the window reflects it very nicely. Home of the Bear Fair. And there is the Spirit Tail. Let's see if it focuses. There we go. Looking really nice. And it's a really good model. I would recommend it. But again, these are pretty tough to come by as uh, it was a popular aircraft. All these uh, low cost carriers like Spirit, Frontier, Southwest, Allegiant, they all sell out really quick from Gemini Jets. So as you can see here, it's still in short final though. And it's coming in from Las Vegas. And yeah, just like that, that'll do for today's update. Uh, yeah, definitely the biggest bag of tricks to a degree was this Delta 737-900 flight. Uh, again, I'm definitely going to miss this as it was really cool to have a one-month uh, rotation there. But yeah, we'll just have to see what happens with it. And hopefully it will get better in the near future there. So like I said, that Delta 737-900 is a cool service. And we will see what happens with that. Uh, outside of that, that'll do for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, glad to see Kansas City in there for Southwest. That's a very exciting service, and I'm certainly looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. Of course, Orlando and um, uh, what was uh, it's Orlando and Long Beach that'll be uh, resuming slash starting respectively very soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully, some new routes also will be coming soon. I think the breeze would make for a good fit here. So they could just take that Frontier Gate uh, that left. That gate's had some history with Volaris Frontier, all those. Different airlines have used it, then Delta has their corner. You got Alaska JetBlue hanging out here on this side of B. Then you got American United Southwest kind of rounding it out over there. And we did have Allegiant, but Allegiant decided that they had other plans due to suspensions and various other reasons. And now they're going to start services to um, some unique ones. I think they're better than Clarksburg, the Midway, but uh, it's still pretty interesting. It looked like uh, I think Denver to Asherville, North Carolina was a route that they started. So certainly interesting, although they do have a big operation there. So that might work, or I think also... Um, uh allen or no it may have been they may have started uh that might have been a different city but i remember they started denver to oh it was somewhere in pennsylvania i think allentown was that it i think it was allentown to denver or something maybe it was a different route they've they started some really interesting ones i'll say that so uh hopefully they do well and that is the goal so but nevertheless i really hope you guys enjoyed this video happy start to april everybody looking forward to the month hopefully it's going to be a good one april is kind of a weird bridge month you know it's it's like the end 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 of winter for most but then it's also kind of the beginning of even summer to a degree it really just depends april's weather can be very wacky uh but that's pretty much the whole united states if we're being completely honest so uh it's always a show get your popcorn out and enjoy it but nevertheless i hope you guys are having a great start to your month and uh yeah looking forward to the future as we proceed into it so hope you guys enjoyed today's video but with all that being said that'll do for today's video thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video my name is redder of aviation I want to thank you guys so much for watching take it easy everybody stay safe just process through you love and love what you do my name is redder of aviation I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon as Red Dwarf Aviation is signing off.